Hey guys, Sam from 3D here. In this video I will show you how to squeeze 3D library. We will talk about how to change the poses of the 3D character, how to change the hair, beards, shirts, pants, shoes and other things. How to change uh, the expressions, eyes or how to use lip sync. We created another tutorial just for the lip sync so definitely check it out. If you are new to Blender definitely go to our YouTube channel and you will see that we created various easy to follow tutorials very short on specific top. For example how to navigate in Blender or maybe how to change the color of the object or how to change the hair and so on and so forth. Then if you want to see what is new in the characters definitely go to characters.design. Also we created the tutorial how to export character to Mixamo and other things. So all the things what I'm mentioning definitely will be in the pack you just bought. So there will be all the links and everything what you need and it will be updated. Okay so I'm in the Blender file and you if you are new definitely go to the to the channel I showed you and then let's go back. And uh, now we can go one thing what can be scary is that there are so many functions in Blender, but we don't have to use all of them. You just need to use a few of them and you need to learn which one you want to use. The important part is like, for example, right now we have so many controllers, so many bones on the character, so it can look like, like there are so many things. And I can easily hide them. For example, I have I key or F key. It, it really depends uh, which type of rig you use. There are like inverse kinematics or forward kinematics. Probably in the future we will do some video on, to, on that. If you are using one of them, for example, right now we are using uh, I key. Uh, so basically the I'm moving only the last bone and the other bones are moving uh, to that. If I change to F key, basically I will move this bone the, the green one then to another green one and, and so on and so forth. It can be useful for other, for some things. But for now I have inverse kinematics. So I'm just moving the last bone and the bones before this bone are just uh, moving automatically. Okay, so I can turn off uh, F key because it's not needed for now. I can also turn like, for example, torso or twig torso or cape because it's cape is pretty specific, uh, fingers details, so I can, this is how I can easily change it, face, I can now have only the face, and this is how I can easily change it. Twix is pretty funny because what you can do, you can easily uh, customize uh, the character and it can be like gummy, it make from gum and then it can be much more cartoonish or stylized and it's pretty fun. Okay, so now I have the, the character with the rig and also the same thing you can do in the object data properties and here you with the holding shift I'm just turning off and off on the bones. Right, so I have two versions. I can go here in the item or I can go to data object properties. So now I will just turn this thing on, off and I can go to generator. So let's say you want to change the type of the hair. You need to be in pose mode and now in the hair I just need to click on this little switcher with G, shortcut G. I click G and just moving with the mouse. Okay, so this is how I change it. So this is how you can customize the three character and you can add the beard to the to the hair. Then if I go to the object mode, I click on the hair, I can easily change the color. All right, so let's say I want to have the black one. Uh, if I want to change the color of the skin, you have two colors. It's basically using the color ramp and I need to change both of them. So here is the first one, here is the second one. Right, so you can you can play with them and have this beautiful look of the of the color skin. Also, if you want to extend the PNG files, what we rendered, we added also their uh, specific colors. If you want to change the or extend the PNG files, what we created, uh, there are specific colors of the color skins. We added them in the text file. So here is the white, brown and black uh, just for you so you can use them. Okay. So let's go back and here I see that in the generator what you can do, you have like hair beard, all of them, all of these things you can customize and you can make a combinations. There are like hundreds of millions of combinations just for the male and the same thing is the, for the female. So let's say I want to have a different outfit. So for example here I have superhero. For superhero it's important that I have also the cape. Let's put some different hair. 
So I'm just turning off the things I don't need uh, because it's part of the outfit. And now, as you can see there, I need to turn on the cape. If I turn on the cape, I can easily change it. I can play up, and I can play with the bones and I can make it like flying and so on. And what I'm doing, I'm in the pause mode and I'm clicking G, R is rotation and S is scale. So I can have the big hand, for example, which is, you know, quite funny to do, but you don't have to do that. So this is how I did the, the pose for the for the superhero. And now if I, for example, want to change the eyes, the same thing, pose mode, and I can change the eyes, like for example, for the money, or it can have star. So this is how you are changing. Then you can change the expression. So for example, shocked. Shocked is changing the eyes. It's like the eyes are bigger, much bigger. And here I can change the lip sync. So lip sync is good if you want to have a talkative 3D character or 3D avatar. Basically, it includes all movements of the mouth. So for example, A, O, C, D, G, L, U, E, and so on. So thanks to this, you can make 3D character talk and use to any any language and it will be me. There is also automatic way we did a tutorial for that. So this is about the rig. Then we have like custom anime, uh, custom poses which you can use and we have also objects connected to these to these poses. So for example, I want to have the pose, let's say pose 48. I need to click on the bones I want to change or I need to click outside. So there is no bone selected and I click the pose. Okay. And now I need to find the objects. I need to find a specific object. Now this is how it changed. And you can see that also uh, my cape was changed to this pose. This is how you can change the, the pose easily. Let's say I want to make per hero workout and I'm going to pose 64. I need to turn off the other pose. And again, I would need probably to play a little bit with the with a cape, but it's it's pretty easy, so it will follow. It would follow, right? Now you're making some workout. Cool, so this is about the posing. Now let's jump to the, if you want to render it. If you want to render it, there are so many options what you can do. In the, in the output properties, you need to go to format, and here you are changing the format output of the image. So for example, if I, if I want to full HD, I need to go to a 1920 to 1080. Now I change the camera. If I go to uh, object mode or I just click zero, I see what will be rendered. If I click G, I'm just moving uh, on the render. And if I change uh, viewport shading, I'm in the viewport shading material preview. But if you if your PC is lagging, go to solid and just then just click on the render. Okay, now if I go to image and just click save as, I can change the format I want to. For example, uh, most popular is PNG file, uh, RGBA with alpha. It means that the final image will be transparent and you can change the color depth and also compression. Here is with the color management. It means like you can change how the colors are rendered or what brightness or contrast is there. So I will, I'm going to show you. So this is the image what I will get outside. If I move with the camera uh, again, Rx, I'm moving with a axis or Gx, Gy, Gz. This is how I can change it. Also, you can change uh, orthographic to perspective. It's uh, for some use cases you need orthographic and or perspective. Uh, this topic we again will cover in the future video, or you can just Google what is the difference. So we are not going to specific. So I promised you to talk a little bit about color management. Uh, regarding the color management, what you, what I'm using is the filmic medium contrast. Then I, I render it. And most of the times what you would need to do is to jump to Photoshop or free version Photopea and just enhance 
brightness, brightness, contrast, vibrance, and some colors. To tweak some colors to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, one of the interesting things what I really like to do sometimes is to turn on the depth of field. It's the same depth of field of the camera, so it will make your uh, background blurry. And you can easily just turn it on and just pick what should be in focus. Then you can play with the aperture, like the same logic as with the classic camera, where you can change it and it will be more blurry, or if it's going up, the number is going up, it means that the background will be less blurry. The image will be, like the focus area will be sharper. Definitely this is, uh, <laughs> this is nice to have thing, but it can create better render for you. Then we have also background. It's like the background what we have in the studio. So it's uh, seamless and you can use it. it. It looks pretty cool. If I change viewport shading, I, now here I can see how it would look like. So this is, if I turn off the show overlays, this is how the render would look like with this lighting, right? So this is pretty cool. And then you can play with the lighting. So I turn off the lighting, I change the lights version. And we have various lights version. One important thing is that with the lighting is that we are using easy HDR. Be sure, because sometimes what is happening to me is that sometimes it's not showing. In any case, if there is no easy HDR, please reach out to me, but it should work nicely. Okay, so this is how I'm getting uh, what are the lights. And if I click zero again, I see that it's not fo uh, focused, but it's, I can easily, easily change it. If I turn off, then I can see that some parts are focused. If for some reason is not focused, just go to add in the object mode, add uh, add a cube. I have the cube here. I will turn off, uh, turn off from the render. I just want to have the focus area here. So I just want to be sure that I see it, then I can turn it off and let's call it focus area. And then I will just find it here and my head is focused. Okay, let's play a little bit with this. Right, and it's it's playing with the, the camera. Again, if you change it to perspective, it's working a little bit nicely. It's a little bit better than not orthographic, but you need to play with all of these settings to get what you need to. Uh, but I think this is pretty cool what you can use. For some cases, you may want to change or to turn off the masking. Uh, masking is basically the same thing what is happening or what, how it is working for the in Photoshop, where you need to hide or show some parts of picture. In 3D is the same. You are hiding or showing parts of the, of the mesh. As you can see here, uh, this is what is visible like this mesh is visible and we are using masking here. If you want to turn it off on, you just need to, uh, here I see the long sleeve, I can turn it off. I need to delete the driver and now it will be shown. The reason why we are not showing it because sometimes you can see that like the mesh is visible here, right? So for these cases, I need to turn it on, right? So this is pretty, pretty useful. Sometimes for some things, this is what you, what you need to do. But important to mention that right now I, I delete the driver. So uh, it was destructive. I need to go back just to be sure that it's always connected. I just wanted to show you that they are masking feature inside the blender, which working similarly, but like what is in the Photoshop. If you want to change the light, and sometimes this can be pretty cool. Like for example, the rim light from the back, uh, this is how you can just change it. The same thing like with the objects you can change it you can make it uh, more bright or brighter as you can see this can be cool right so this is how how you're changing and you can play and get different look let's put like dark ui okay so this is this is how you can play 
Okay, so now you can just render it and you can use it. The next thing what I wanted to show you is that uh, there are also, if you go to the dope sheet, action editor, and now if I look for the, here I need to go and to find combinations, I turn it on. What happened here is that we have on the timeline, it's not visible, but let me select all. I selected all, I just clicked here in the object select all and I see that we have different keyframes inside the timeline. Every keyframe is basically different combination of the of the character and here you can see that uh, it will change the clothes. If you need random character in various pose this is to go for you, right? So you can easily change it and uh, just combinations of, of 3D characters. There are millions of possible combinations that you can use. There are just, I think, like 12,000 of them, right? So we have also accessories and you can combine uh, with the clothes. If you don't want to have that, just go uh, to the timeline and you can easily hit the A. I just click A here, A here, and just delete. Right, and then I don't have that. And I have it back, right? So this is how you can how you can play and reuse what we built. Okay, that was it. If you are interested in anything else, definitely go to our Discord and feel free to ask the questions there. We are community there. We are trying to help each other. So go there, feel free to ask there or reach out to me at Samuel at 3D.design. Uh, we are building, we are producing more and more tutorials on our YouTube channel. So definitely check it out also. If you want to squeeze our 3D libraries or to get to learn more about 3D or Blender, this is the way to go. If you want to combine, because I think this is the coolest thing is that we are building the whole 3D system, 3D design system, which means that you can combine, for example, icons, characters, or with the pets, animals, or put the characters inside the city or inside building or room. Definitely go to 3D.design. There are multiple 3D libraries which you can combine with the 3D characters. Also, we created tutorials for that, how you can combine together 3D libraries. So definitely, this is a very interesting way to do. Again, you don't need to know the Blender, like the whole Blender. You just need to know a few things how to use it if you want to get inspiration what we are creating follow us on dribble or instagram if you need some custom 3d work reach out to me again that was it um, i hope you liked the tutorial and see you in the next video bye